Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go through the derivation of the isentropic relations and here is an outline of what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to be starting with the combined first and second law of thermodynamics. I have a video on this, I'll post it in the, in the video description. We're going to assume a thermally perfect gas where the inter intermolecular forces are negligible between the molecules. This means that the ideal gas law holds and that we have the expressions for the specific heats that I also have a video on which I'll link to. Then we will say that the entropy, or we, we will get an expression of the entropy change as a function of temperature and pressure, as a function of these two state variables. For the isentropic relations, isentropic means that we have constant entropy, so ds is equal to zero, so we'll set the equations equal to zero, and we'll obtain exp uh, expressions relating the uh, pressure ratios, temperature ratios, and density ratios between two different states. So I'm going to start out with the combined first and second law of thermodynamics in enthalpy form H, and I want to replace this dH uh, with the term so that we can actually plug in the specific heat at constant pressure. So if you look at this plot over here, here. It's a plot of enthalpy versus temperature, and if I'm going from state 1 to state 2, uh, I can define that change in enthalpy by defining a slope and then multiplying that slope by how far we actually moved in temperature. So the slope's defined as the enthalpy at 2 minus the enthalpy at 1 divided by the temperature at 2 minus the temperature at 1, which is just the rise over the run. And so you can find out that value of how far uh, or how much we change in enthalpy by multiplying the slope by the change in temperature, T2 minus T1, and you can rewrite this as dH is equal to dH over dT, that's the slope, times dT, and it might look trivial to you, but that's just a visualization of, of where this term comes from now that we plug in here. So we have dH dT times dT, and you'll note that this is sort of, uh, it's, it's essentially the first term in the partial derivative term if you're talking about an enthalpy that is a function of both temperature and pressure, except for the fact that we're assuming that we have a thermally perfect gas, which means that the enthalpy is only a function of temperature, which is why we have this uh, this d here instead of del uh, in, instead of the partial derivative. And so, from my specific heat video, Cp is equal to dH dt. And so we can plug in for this term here, we can plug in the specific heat at constant pressure, and we get Cp dt is equal to Tds plus Vdp. And if we divide through this expression, this whole expression by temperature, we end up getting Cp times dt over t is equal to ds plus V over t dp. So we have this expression up here, and I want to get rid of this term here, this V over t term. So I'm going to use the ideal gas law, which we can do because we've assumed a thermally perfect gas. We can say that the ideal gas law in the form that we want is PV is equal to RT, pressure, specific volume, specific gas constant, temperature. And we want to get rid of V over t, so I'm going to solve for V over t, so I'm going to divide both sides by t to get V over t, divide both sides by p to get R over p, and if we plug this R over p in, we end up getting this expression here, same left side, plus equals ds plus r dp over p, and I'm writing it this way uh, for a reason that you'll see in a second. Uh, we're trying to solve for these isentropic relations, which means we want an expression for the change in entropy. So I want to solve for ds, so I'm going to uh, just subtract this term off from both sides. So we get ds is equal to cp dt over t minus r dp over p. We want to know what the change in entropy is. Uh, that's the most useful quantity, is what a change in an entropy from state 1 to state 2 is. So we're trying to look for s2 minus s1, and to get that we want to integrate from state 1 to state 2. So if we integrate ds from state 1 to state 2, then we integrate this as well, cp dt over t minus R is the specific gas constant. It is a constant, and so it comes outside the integral, and we have the integral from one to two of dP over P. Now, for a thermally perfect gas, Cp is a function of temperature. However, if we make a further assumption that we have a calorically perfect gas where the Cps are constant, then we can pull this Cp out of the integral here and we end up with this expression right here. So now we have this expression up here and we can integrate and you'll note that uh, these two integrals here are in the form of this equation here that you'll find in any calculus book where you have the integral from state one to state two of dx over x or one over x dx, whichever way you wanna call it, is equal to the natural log of x from state one to state two. So that's the same integral here. This is just in terms of t is in terms of p. So we integrate this, we get s2 minus s1 is equal to cp uh, times the natural log of t integrated from, or evaluated from 1 to 2, minus r, natural log of p evaluated from state 1 to state 2. Here I've just called s2 minus s1 delta s is equal to cp, and uh, we're going to find uh, this term here by taking the natural log of t2 minus the natural log of t1, minus r, 
here. Same way for the pressure, natural log of P2 minus natural log of P1. From log rules, uh, you might remember that the natural logs, two natural logs subtracted from each other, you'll get the ratio of this term over this term. So we end up having the entropy change, delta S is equal to CP natural log of T2 over T1 minus R natural log of P2 over P1. So this equation will give you the change in entropy between two states, one and two. This Expression is one you'll see pop up a lot, except that it is only valid for a calorically perfect gas for constant specific heats. You'll find that CPG ends up being a case that you can use for uh, a lot, a lot of cases in gas dynamics, so it's not too limiting. So we have this expression rewritten up here for the uh, change in entropy, and we're going to assume an isentropic process because we're trying to define the, or derive the isentropic relation. So this delta S is equal to zero. Plug in that zero here, and we have this expression here. I'm gonna add this term to both sides, and so I'll have R natural log of P2 over P1 is equal to CP natural log of T2 over T1. I'm going to divide both sides by R, so I just end up with this on the left-hand side, and I have CP over R, now natural log of T2 over T1. CP is just from my other video is gamma R over gamma minus one. And so if we plug that into here, we have CP is gamma R over gamma minus one. We still have this R in the denominator R here, and we still have this natural log of T2 over T1. And then these R's cancel out here in the numerator and denominator, and we're left with gamma over gamma minus one natural log of T2 over T1. And from log rules again, you can bring this term that's preceding this natural log term up into the exponent of the term that's inside the natural log which is why we can write this equation as natural log of P2 over P1, that stays the same. And we have the natural log of this temperature ratio to the gamma over gamma minus one. And now if you take the exponential of both sides, so if I take E of both sides like this, then these natural logs, they go away, and you get P2 over P1 is equal to T2 over T1 to the gamma over gamma minus one. So that's our first expression relating the pressure ratio to the temperature ratios for an isentropic process. Okay, now to get the uh, relationship between the pressure and the density ratios is a little bit more involved, and we're gonna start with the form that was on the previous whiteboard, where we had gotten it down to this natural log of P2 over P1 is equal to gamma over gamma minus one natural log of T2 over T1. We're going to use the ideal gas law, but in a different form, P is equal to rho RT, where we're using density instead of the specific volume because we want to find these ratios in terms of density. And if we solve for T, we can get P over rho R. So I'm gonna substitute in for T2 and T1 here. So we have gamma over gamma minus one natural log of, for T2, I have P2 over rho two R2. And for T1, it's in the denominator, so what I've done is I've just flipped this ratio upside down and multiplied it. And so we have rho one R one over P one. What this says then is that the specific gas constants are the same, which means that the R's here cancel out and we end up having P two over P one, that's this first term, and rho one over rho two, that's this term here. Now what I've done is I've multiplied this term, I've multiplied the gamma minus one and divided by gamma to the other sides. So now I have this gamma minus one over gamma times natural log of P2 over P1. This leaves us just with this natural log term. So natural log of P2 over P1, and now I'm dividing by, see that this was a row one over row two, I can divide by row two over row one. So that flips that ratio in, into the right way that we want it for the final solution. And so from this, because we're dividing, we have a natural log and we're dividing, that translates into a subtraction of natural log. So we have the natural log of P2 over P1 minus the natural log of rho 2 over rho 1. And then what we can do, you can see this, there's the natural log of P2 over P1, natural log of P2 over P1. So I'm putting the natural logs of the pressures on one side, natural logs of the density on the other side. So I'm actually adding the natural log of rho two over rho one to the other side, and that's where this term comes from. And then I'm leaving this on this right-hand side, and I'm subtracting this term, the gamma minus one over gamma, which leaves us with, I've factored out the natural log of P two over P one term, which gives us the one, that's from this term, one, minus, because I subtracted this from both sides, minus this gamma minus one over gamma term times that natural log of P2 over P1. And one is just equal to gamma over gamma because I'm trying to get the same denominator, the same common denominator. So I substitute in gamma over gamma for one and I get gamma over gamma minus gamma minus one over gamma, natural log of P2 over P1. If I combine them, I get gamma minus gamma plus one over gamma times this natural log of P2 over P1. Gamma minus gamma is zero, so we end up having one over gamma, which means that I'm going to multiply both sides by gamma to get it over here and get rid of it on this pressure side. And then we end up with this gamma natural 
log of rho two over rho one is equal to natural log of p two over p one. We're going to move this gamma up to the uh, up to the top here, like we did in the temperature case, where we'll have the natural log of rho two over rho one to the gamma is equal to the natural log of p two over p one. Now, if we take the exponential, we end up with our relation, and I've just flipped the sides that these uh, terms are on. We get the pressure ratio is equal to the density ratio raised to the power of gamma. And so that gives us the final isentropic relations, and here they are summed up where the pressure ratio P2 over P1 is equal to T2 over T1 to the gamma over gamma minus 1 is equal to rho 2 over rho 1 to the gamma. And if you wanted to find the relationship, if you want to just T2 over T1 on the left-hand side, and you're trying to relate the temperatures and the densities, you can move these uh, exponents around and you'll get similar relationship relationships. Uh, so that covers the isentropic relations, which I'll be using in my subsequent videos on gas dynamics. Thanks for watching.